And now, another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Within minutes, he was to die for murder. Yet three people knew of his innocence. In a moment, act one of Night of the Storm. Written for suspense by Peter Fernandez. Well, did you make the appeal? I did my best, Jim, but the governor turned me down. I see. Then then there's no other chance? No hope at all? Well, as the governor pointed out, if, if we can come up with any new evidence, any new facts... New evidence? Facts? If I knew anything, don't you think I would have told you long ago, even before the trial? I didn't kill my uncle... I hadn't seen him in years. You know all that, Jim, but we haven't been able to prove it. (gasps) The district attorney could prove that you killed him. I didn't. Right up to the second they strap me in the chair tomorrow night and turn on the juice, I'm going to keep on swearing. Of course you are, Jim. But you, my lawyer, you you don't believe me either. You just pretend. That's what you're paid for. That's what you're doing. Now listen to me, Jim. The only one who's ever believed in me is Emily. And what's going to happen to her after tomorrow when I'm dead? What's going to happen to Emily? Calm down, Jim. This isn't doing any good. I didn't kill my uncle. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. He didn't. He didn't kill Uncle Corey. You know that as well as I do, Steve. Jim needed money, didn't he? He never killed for it. He needed it desperately. And as well, Uncle Corey was leaving everything to Jim. He had reason enough. I've said it a thousand times already. Jim couldn't have done it. I know him so well. Why, if there was even a bug in the house, he'd he'd take it outside and, and let it go rather than kill it. But look, Emily. Emily, sooner or later, we've got to start facing the fact that there isn't a shred of evidence to prove that he wasn't the killer. Steve. Do you mean you never believed him either? You, his own brother? Oh, come on, Em. I wanted to believe him. You know that. Did you? Did you really want to, Steve? Well, yeah, Sure. What do you think? Why are you looking at me like that? You know, I just realized... You could have been pretending all this time, couldn't you? Huh? Pretending that the last thing you want is to have Jim executed tomorrow night. Well, all along... Oh, come off it, will you? Steve, when and if Jim dies, you get that money, don't you? Gee, Em, I don't know. I hadn't thought about it. Oh, I'm sure you must know that will by heart. What does it say now? Everything is left to Jim, but in the event of Jim's death, then, Steve, you become the rightful heir. Isn't that the way the will reads, isn't it? listen to me, Emily. $48,000. Why, you'll become a rich man if your brother dies. I just wanted to stop by and comfort you tonight. Had an idea you'd be pretty broken up, but I don't have to listen to that kind of talk. Not even from you. Good night. Steve, I I thought you'd be home by now. What do you want? Look, just before you left, you you gave me an idea. Tell me, I've forgotten. What was the name of that woman you were with the night Uncle Corey was killed? What do you want to know that? Please, what's her name? Good night, Emily. Look, in the morning, I can look it up in the court records. You might as well tell me. But I broke off with her. I don't see her anymore. If I can find her, I'm going to have a talk with her, Steve. You keep away from her. Why? Why? You must have a reason. Tell me. She might have moved out of town. Are you afraid of me seeing her? No, no, of course not. Jim killed Uncle Corey. It was proved in the court. There's nothing you, me, or anybody else can do to save him from going to the chair for it. Steve, if something can be done to save my husband, who happens to be your brother, don't you want me to try? You're having a chance. Her name, Steve. What is the name of the woman who gave you such a good alibi? Stay away from her. I see. So that's the attitude you're taking now. All right. I'll have to find out for myself. Good night, Emily. I'll get her name and address from the court records. Good night. (laughs) 
Yeah? Who's there? I'd like to talk to you, Miss Mallard. Well, I ain't opening this door for nobody, so beat it. But I'm Jim Russell's wife. I've got to see you. His wife? Yes. You got anybody with you? No, no, I'm alone. Please. Just a minute. Thank you. Look, sister, I know all about your husband getting the chair tonight, and I'm real sorry, see, but there's nothing I can do for Look, you. Look, I, I got the idea from Steve that maybe if I had a talk Steve. with you... You're trying to tell me that Steve sent you over here? Look, honey, don't hand me that, because I know better. What do you mean? Uh, nothing. Nothing at all. Just go away and leave me alone. No, wait! Hey, don't shut the door! What do you think you're doing? Steve, you're keeping something from me. I know it. You and Steve, the two of you. What are you thinking, that I had something to do with killing that old guy? No. But I think you might have lied to the police about the night he was killed. And what if I did? It's too late now, and I ain't never going to change my story. You'd rather see an innocent man die? Now, listen, if I change my story now, if I change what I said in court, they'll send me up on a perjury rap. I ain't going to jail no matter what. And it's true, isn't it? Steve wasn't with you the night Uncle Cory was killed. Steve was the one who did it. Not Jim. No, I ain't saying. Now, beat it, will oh, you? Please, please, you've got to change your story and tell the truth. You've got to save my husband. Look, I don't got to do nothing. Now, get out of here. Oh, Mr. Rutland, at last, thank goodness. Oh, hello, Mrs. Russell. Mr. Rutland, I've been waiting here in your office for almost two hours. Oh, it's that storm out there. The highways are flooded. I know. My car stalled when the ignition got wet. Well, anyway, I'm here, but I'm sorry to say that the news I've brought from upstate isn't good. Mrs. Russell, there'll be no reprieve tonight for Jim. Yes, there will. Hmm? They've got to give him a reprieve now. And even, well, as soon as they know the truth, a full pardon. What are you talking about? Last night, Steve, you know Jim's brother, Steve? Yes, yes. Mr. Rutland, he just about admitted to me that he was the one who killed Uncle Corey. What? Oh, now, Mrs. Russell. Don't you see? If Jim dies, then Steve gets all that money. He planned to kill Uncle Corey and then have Jim die for the murder. It's the way that will read, that in the event of Jim's death, then Steve... I'm sorry, would... Mrs. Russell, but that isn't proof. Yes, it is. I... Now, it's only a possible motive. One that I know the police considered a long time ago. Mr. Rutland, Your I... husband's hunting knife was used in the murder. I know. His prints were on it, yes. whether planted or not. Yes. And your husband didn't have an alibi for that night, but Steve did. An airtight Will alibi. please listen? She lied. That woman, Muriel Mallard, went into court and lied that Steve was with her that night. Perjury? She... Well, possibly, but I doubt it. She had no reason to. Part of that money would be good reason, wouldn't it? Well, yes, it would, but... I saw her this morning. She wouldn't deny that she lied. But I'm sure that she wouldn't admit it either. Well, I... Would she? <sighs> no. What do you think we can do, Mrs. Russell? Mr. Rutten, I think that I could... Can... It's, uh... It's 2.45 now. Let's see, they're on standard time up at the Capitol. Standard time? Now, that means in... In seven hours, it'll be all over. Seven hours? Mm -hmm. Mr. Rutland, will you help me? Well, of course, but you'll have to tell me how. Stay right here in your office. Wait for me to phone you so that you can get in touch with the governor. Very well. I'll be here. Oh, thank you. Mrs. Russell, I know how you feel. There's hardly a loved one of a condemned man who doesn't feel that he... He might be innocent. You've got to be prepared to accept the fact that the weight of evidence was against him, that, that he was proved guilty. Why, even I, as his defense attorney, now believe that justice will be done. Justice? When he isn't guilty? I'll never believe he is, never. And now, after what I just heard, I'm going to try until the last possible second to save my husband. In just a moment, we will return for the concluding act of Suspense. Well, 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 look what the cat struck in out of the rain. Sure, you Listen, I've got to talk to you. Go away. I told you once today to beat it. I'm huh? not going to beat it. It's taken me all afternoon to find you again, and I'm not going to leave. 
Until I know it's too late and my husband is dead. Well, you don't have long to wait, do you, huh? Well, that clock up there says eight. It's eight here. But up in the... That's one hour. That's all. And then you're a free woman, right? Right. Hey, Mac! What do you want, Muriel? Uh, give my friend here one of these. No, I, I'm I fine. No, I don't want one for me. Come on, no, honey. Me. Sit down. And take off that coat you're stopping wet. What? Right, take off the coat. All right, I will. It's going to be a long night. No, maybe not. It'll depend on you, Muriel. And if you'll help me. Help you? <laughs> Listen, sister, in my league, nobody helps anybody. Here's your boot, girl. Oh, thank you, Mac, very much. Come on, honey, drink up, huh? You'll be surprised how fast the time's going to pass. Go ahead. Drink it. I... Yes. Yes, all right. That's it. Well, cheers. <laughs> Brother, just listen to that storm out there, huh? Oh, what a night. What a night to go to the chair. Muriel. Muriel, look at that clock, will you? Hmm? Over there. Oh, yeah. Nine. Just not... Oh. Muriel, do you realize what is happening to my husband right this minute? Yeah. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. I'm real sorry. Sorry isn't going to bring him back. No, I know. Why didn't you tell the truth? You weren't with Steve that night. Why didn't you tell the truth? Oh, why should I have? But now, what difference does it make? Might as well tell you the truth now. See, Steve and me broke up a long time ago. I was with Fred Baines that night. Who? Yeah, Freddie Baines, you know, owns the auto parts company. Auto parts company. I guess you don't know Freddie, no. But that's where I was. That's who I was really Why with. Why didn't you lie, Muriel? Listen, sister, all my life I never seen more than a couple hundred bucks at one time. And now? Oh, boy, now that's all over. I'm going to see 10,000. Imagine 10 G's off for me. Hey, where are you going? Fred Baines. He's the one who can tell the police that you weren't with Steve that night. Yeah. I can call my lawyer now and, and have him get a reprieve for Jim. Hey, honey, you might as well stay and have another drink. It's too late to do anything now. Your husband's dead. That's all over with. It's nine o'clock here. But upstate, they're on standard time. Up there, he won't die for an hour. Oh, yeah, that little... Uh, ain't gonna do her no good. She can't prove nothing. Hi, Muriel. Thought I'd find uh, you here. See? She's in there. I, I told her about me and Fred. I didn't know. Hang up that phone, Emily. No. No. I can get the proof now that Jim isn't the killer. And I can prove that you were the one, Steve. The guns in my pocket aim right at your head, Emily. Hang up that phone. No, Steve. Hang it up. No. I'm following you all afternoon, just waiting to see if you make a move like this. Well, it didn't do you any good. It just kept your nose out of this. Well, I got my car parked right outside of the curb, so come on. What, what are you going to do? What do you think I'm going to do now you know about Muriel being with Fred? Won't this be a coincidence? You and Jim dying on the same night. Move, Emily, or I'll kill you right here. Where are you taking me? Somewhere along the river. This rain is so swollen, away he'll think twice about finding this car out in deep water with you in it. Let me out, Steve. I'll pull this trigger right now. I'm warning you, Emily. Oh, that doesn't scare me. Not when you're going to kill me anyway. Stop this car and let me out. Don't be a jerk. Don't you think I know you'll go straight to the car? I said stop this car. Hey, let go of the wheel. No. What are you doing? No. Let's get it. Let me out. Now, get this door open. There. The gun. Where's that gun? Emily. Emily, come back here. 
Don't leave me pinned under the steering wheel like this. Emily! Emily! It's 25 to 9 up there. 25 minutes. Oh, the phone. The phone. I've got to get to a phone. Isn't anyone home? Please. Oh, God. Oh, oh thank goodness. Yeah? Please. There's been an accident down that way. May, may I use your phone? An accident, eh? Anybody hurt? I don't know for certain. Please, I've just got to get to well, a phone. It can't be too bad if you don't even Please, know. I've got to make a phone call. Well, I understand Please. that, but you could have seen for yourself if you looked up at the wire coming what? into this house. Just electric. I ain't got no phone. No phone? That's what I said. What am I going to do? I've only got 20 minutes. Huh? I've got to get to a telephone. Oh, I see. Well, uh, can you make out that clump of trees up the road there? Yes. Well, just the other side. There's a bend in the road yes. and then a gas station. They got a booth right out near the pump. Thank you. You're getting all soaked. I'll lend you my umbrella. <laughs> I'm... Oh, no, my purse is back in the car. Oh, please. Yes, ma'am? What can I do for you? A dime. I've got to have a dime. What would you like, change for a quarter? No, no, I left my purse back in the car. Give me a dime. Please, will you give me a dime? <laughs> Just like that, huh? Please, my husband is going to die in ten minutes. Unless I make a phone call. Oh, take it please. easy, will you, ma'am? Please, just lend me a time, then I'll pay you back later, please. Oh, sure, ma'am. Please, hurry. Coming right up, ma'am. Coming right please. up. Please. Here you are. One dime. Please. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. This number. What's the number? I can't remember. I'll have to look it up. C-O-S-E-Q-R-R-O-R-U-R-U-G-R-U. -R 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 -U. Rutland, Rutland, Rutland attorney. Oh, here it is. B, 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 wait. 5098. Oh, no. B, 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 U, A, 5, O, 9, 8. Oh, he said he'd be there. He said he'd wait. Oh, Hello? Oh, Mr. Rutland, this is Emily Russell. They've got to stop the execution. Why, you know they can't stop it, Mrs. Russell, unless we've got definite proof that he's innocent. Mr. Rutland, we will be able to prove it. What? We will be able to prove that Muriel wasn't with Steve that night. We well, will. Well, facts, Mrs. Russell. We facts. will. That's what they're waiting for. They'll grant a stay to investigate, but what can we give them to go on? Muriel was with the Fred Baines that night when I found out Steve tried to kill me. Hurry, Mr. Rutland, hurry, please. Uh, what's the number of the phone you're talking about? Uh, uh, Academy 23099. All right, I'll call you right back just as soon as I've spoken to the governor. Well, then I'll wait here. I've got to know if Jimmy's safe. I understand. Hang up now, Mrs. Russell. Yes, yes, yes of course. Six minutes. Six minutes? He's got to be in time. Yes? It's Rutland, Mrs. Russell. I'm... I'm sorry to say that I couldn't get through to the governor. You couldn't? Well, no. with this storm, the wires at the Capitol are down. There isn't one open oh, line. No, no, but, no. But, Mrs. No. Russell, didn't you hear what I said? All the lines are down. I spoke to the power company, and the electric wires are down, too. Don't you see, Mrs. Russell, there's no power at all up there. Then Jim wasn't executed? No, he wasn't. Oh, thank God. Well, there's nothing more for you to worry about, Mrs. Russell. By the time the power is restored, the authorities will have the whole story, and they can start checking it out. And they'll find that Jim is innocent. Just as I always knew he was. Suspense. 
You've been listening to Night of the Storm, written for suspense by Peter Fernandez. In a moment, the names of our players and a word about next week's story of suspense. Featured in tonight's story of suspense was Rosemary Rice as Emily. Also in our cast were Alan Manson as Steve, Ralph Camargo as Rutland, Terry Keene as Muriel, James Stevens as Jim, and Lawson Zerby as Parker. Musical supervision by Ethel Huber. Suspense is produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr. Listen again next week when we return with Epitaph, written by Walter Black. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Tomorrow, if you're tuned to your favorite CBS radio network station, this is what you'll hear. Arthur Godfrey time, presided over by singer Richard Hayes, who's pinch-hitting for the old redhead. The Gary Moore Radio Show, starring one Garrison Morfitt and his sidekick Derwood Kirby in lots of lively talk. Art Linkletter's house party, with fun for all the guests, including you, and highlighting Art's inimitable children's interviews. And finally, the Bing Crosby Rosemary Clooney Show, presenting two great singers bringing song and friendly banter. All here, all available, Monday through Friday at this dial address. The latest news every hour on the hour, every weekday on the CBS radio network.